I'm Warren Berkeley with Jay Taylor, and this is All About Books. We welcome you to this second episode. We have plans for future episodes. Perhaps we will set up a website and provide some easy access in the future. Jay and I have been book reading friends for a long time, and once the stay-at-home orders started coming out, uh, we thought this would be a good time to launch an interview program about reading and books and most importantly, content that pertains to the Bible and then the Bible itself. That must be at the top of the list. We have a guest today. Jay, will you introduce our guest? Uh, yes, Warren, thank you. Good to be with you. And uh, we have Randy Harshbarger with us today. Warren, you and I have been uh, long distance reading friends, and um, Randy and I are short distance reading friends. He's on the other side of the wall, and so we're glad to have Randy with us today. Randy's been with the Stallings Drive Church of Christ here in Nacogdoches, Texas for the past 25 years, and Randy is a reader, and so we, we uh, welcome Randy uh, to our program today. Well, thank you very much, Jay. I'm sure glad to be with you and Warren and to talk about books and reading books and how this contributes to the life of the mind for the child of God, not just for preachers, but for every child of God. All right, Randy, we want to start off with uh, thinking or asking you, uh, what books are you currently reading right now? Do you have about two or three that you'd like to share with us? I do. Thank you for asking. I'm going to hold up this book right here. The name of this book is Educated, a Memoir by Tara Westover. It was published to wide acclaim. It is still, I think, on the top 10 New York Times bestseller list. I read this book last year. It was a very haunting memoir. Uh, it was a challenging memoir. It was a challenging book to read because of the uh, subject matter. Tara Westover was raised in Idaho, in the foothills of Idaho, and a kind of a survivalist uh, family. Uh, they were a Mormon of the Mormon faith, uh, but uh, the abuse, mental abuse and physical abuse, but she uh, extricated herself from all of these uh, problems and uh, went to Brigham Young. At, and I think she was 16 when she did that and ended up uh, with uh, two uh, advanced degrees from Harvard and from Cambridge. And I think she's still in England, but uh, just the tenacity, just the willpower to overcome uh, her raising, shall we say. And it was, a, it was a very enjoyable read. I probably will read this book again, but I've recommended it uh, to quite a few people, Tara Westover. Then there is another book that I would put this down uh, that I would uh, mention. I just finished reading this rather large book. It's about a thousand pages. Churchill, Walking with Destiny, Andrew Roberts. Now, that's the British author, not the preacher that preaches down in the Tampa, Florida area, but uh, this is about a thousand pages, Churchill. The value of this book is that uh, archives regarding World War II have just been opened recently to scholars, and so I've read about, oh, I imagine, 10 biographies of Churchill. Uh, William Manchester's three volumes are quite enjoyable, but uh, this book has the advantage of uh, drawing on these new resources, and uh, it was just a, a great, uh, it was a great book. I really enjoyed it. I don't think uh, he's plowing new ground or anything like that, but if you like uh, books about history and books about leaders, Churchill certainly would be, I think, at the top, at the top of the list. Uh, it needn't be daunting. Uh, the chapters, I enjoyed the chapters because Page-wise, they were short enough where I could read a chapter in one sitting and then not to feel, uh, you know, overwhelmed by, by the entire exercise. But this is a wonderful book about Churchill. Now, let me also move to this. I am reading also this book, and I am not sure about the pronunciation of her name. Uh, Amity Shales or Shales? Shales. Shales. Is that how you say that? Uh, her book is Great Society, A New History. I'm almost finished with this book. It is a second look at LBJ's Great Society. Of course, this goes back to the 1960s. I was just a teenager then, most of the time, a junior high and high school. And so I was familiar with uh, some of the events. I've read a great deal about LBJ 
Robert Caro's books, of course, are probably well known to many of our listeners. This book, Great Society, was really an introduction to things I'd never thought too much about. For example, the uh, auto workers and the AFL-CIO and how that the labor unions contributed to many of the social programs that were uh, perpetrated by LBJ, Medicare, uh, Medicaid, Head Start, all those kinds of things, building projects in the large metropolitan uh, areas, Detroit, St. Louis, New York City. And so it is a very enjoyable book to read. And so if you, she has uh, another book, her first book, well-known book, The Forgotten Man, is about what happened to people during the 1930s and the Great Depression. And then let me just say this, uh, in regard to reading, I frequently like to read books, uh, well, not simultaneously, that would be at the same time, but I have uh, about three books going at the same time that have what I would describe as overlapping themes. For example, in the Great Society, of course, obviously, LBJ, uh, the rest of the nation, they were trying to get out of Vietnam. Well, you could also, and I'm reading this book, Fire in the Lake by Francis Fitzgerald. And it is an older book, but it is a fascinating book about really a social history. It's talking about American policy and about South Vietnamese, particularly, I would say for what it's worth, that if you were going to read just one book about Vietnam, this would be a good choice. Well, this dovetails into the Great Society book because there, of course, you're talking about LBJ, you're talking about Vietnam, you're talking about all of the problems that ensued in our nation. And then the third book, and I don't have the book with me, Sometimes uh, we talk about reading on, on the Kindle. I don't enjoy reading on the Kindle as much, but I do when I travel, and I travel a great bit, as you know. And I just finished, even this morning, a book by Pat Conroy, The Water is Wide, about his teaching experiences in an island off of uh, near Hilton Head, Beaufort, South Carolina, and uh, his experiences of teaching disadvantaged children. Uh, poor, uneducated, alcoholism, abuse, all of the social problems that these little children encountered. And so all of those themes are somewhat overlapping, and I have found it uh, useful to just kind of keep that thread going. You, you could do it in any genre, any subject, Civil War, American history, whatever it might be, but I've enjoyed doing things like that. Randy, let me ask you, I'm sure young preachers every now and then, uh, especially when they see all the books you've got behind you in the background there, young preachers might ask you, uh, what books do you recommend I read as a young preacher, especially a guy just getting started and he really needs some reading recommendations? What comes right out of your head about that? Well, that's a good question, and I appreciate the question. When young preachers ask me the question, then I try to give them as serious an answer as I possibly can. It is my opinion, of course. It means very little to anybody but myself, but I think it's a, a studied opinion about uh, preaching and about our approach to gospel preaching, that we need to work at the art of preaching. I think most preachers that I associate with, Jay, you, others, uh, we study the Bible enough if you can study the Bible enough, but we're, we study enough to be competent to know what we're talking about, but then to work at the art of preaching, of how, of how to get up and deliver a sermon, of how to think about our work. One of the best books that I have read, that probably the most enjoyable book I have read about preaching, is this book by Fred Craddock, Preaching. I've read it numerous times. I was just looking here. I have all kinds of notes uh, interspersed throughout the pages. I underline, I mark, those kinds of things. I use a yellow marker uh, as a concession to my eyesight. That helps it stand out. Uh, but preaching, I would recommend that to any young preacher. Years ago, James P. Needham published a book, Preachers and Preaching, and it's nuts and bolts, how to, and so how to uh, hold a gospel meeting and subjects to choose and how to stay with people, just very pragmatic issues, those kinds of things. But the idea, a book, for example, like Preaching by Fred Craddock, 
or I'm thinking of John R. W. Stott's book, Between Two Worlds, his uh, adventures in preaching. It's a very fascinating book. Uh, Brother D. Bowman's book on preaching has a lot of useful information. But to imbued, to be imbued with the idea, the concept, the privilege of preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, that we need to fill our minds and our hearts with what a rare privilege this is for, for somebody like myself, that the Lord allows me, at least in some small way, to, uh, to try to get up and say things, hopefully and prayerfully, that will uh, help the people of God. Certainly they affect the eternal destiny of people who are listening seriously to God's word. And so to just be serious about, about uh, preaching God's word. And so I think those two books certainly would be uh, good recommendations. All of the books that perhaps we've just said. Uh, there are other books, of course, uh, how to preaching that connects and fresh air in the pulpit, all kinds of things. But I've just pulled those few books out. Okay, so a young preacher talks to you about what books specifically, and then you're probably going to also talk to him about reading habits. Uh, do you have a particular time of day? Do you put that in your schedule, something you do in the evening? Talk to us about reading habits. Oh. Well, my personal goal, and this, of course, I'm not trying to impose this on anyone, but of course, you form good habits by working hard at forming good habits. Uh, it is strange to me. I've talked to preachers. Perhaps you have as well. I'm sure Jay has. You'll hear sometimes a gospel preacher say, I really don't enjoy reading. I don't enjoy the, uh, you know, getting into the office. I know it's important. I'm trying to do it. I try to be serious about it. But that, it just, I cannot understand that. We have to work at the art of preaching and preaching involves study, and this, of course, uh, you're going to have to form good habits. So what I was trying to say is if you read, think about it like this. If you read 60 pages a day in a book, just say, for example, you can read a page a minute. Now, people say, I can't read a page a minute. Okay, read a page every two minutes or whatever. But if you read 60 pages a day, 365 days a year. That's 21,900 pages. That's a lot of books. That's 22 big books, 44 medium books, uh, 88 average size books. But wouldn't a gospel preacher like to say at the end of the year, I've at least read one book a week, 52 books. Wouldn't that be a modest goal? But the way you delve into that is you've just got to start exercise. We know about habits. You're not going to get up and go to the gym unless you get up and go to the gym. And so you have to form those habits. And so I try to do things in segments. I might study on the Old Testament in the morning, New Testament in the afternoon, casual reading at night. But I, my goal is to get those 60 pages in. If I don't, I don't. And so uh, <clears throat> I would uh, talk to uh, young preachers or anybody just to have a regular reading program uh, that would involve all aspects of your interest, these history books, books on preaching, uh, whatever it may be. Jay, you have some other questions for Randy. Yeah, that's, that's really good. Appreciate everything you've said. And I know that you have an interest in young preachers. We've had uh, some here at Stallings Drive work with us and so developing these reading habits, um, what would you say to these young preachers? And then secondly, uh, to our teenagers, to develop readers, not just among preachers, but specifically our young preachers and then our teenagers, developing those good Bible reading habits or just reading habits in general, what would you say to them? Well, of course, book clubs are quite popular nowadays. And so teenagers in a particular congregation, for example, they might choose a book of mutual interest and four or five uh, get together each week or every other week after they've read a chapter or two in the Bible, uh, in the book, uh, and discuss it. Uh, of course, you know, Jay, that we have been around lots of college students all through the years, and I've given away dozens of copies of Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis to any college student who comes our way who would like a copy of that book. And I try to hold them accountable for reading it. I'm glad for them to have the book, and I hope they do. 
Uh, I read C.S. Lewis's Mere Christianity every January of every year. I just start off my year doing that. It, I love the book. It helps me. And so I would encourage young people to do something like that. Uh, they could pick a book that uh, they have a mutual interest in. And as long as they are reading, this is going to help develop that habit of reading. And they read it in concert with others. Then they get together because the teenagers particularly, we're all social creatures. We're social animals, of course, and they, they want to be together and they can channel their interest, channel their interest in that way. That's so uh, in my judgment, that's a whole lot better than television and all these other kinds of things that, uh, that, might, uh, that might distract uh, our young people. I do have this book right here, How to Stay Christian in College. And this is by, and I, again, I cannot pronounce this man's name. It's Bud Zawinski or something like that. He teaches at the University of Texas, and uh, he's all over the internet. He has lots of good resources, but it talks about very practical things. Even uh, people in high school, our young people that are going off to college, they could read a book like this, but it talks about dating and what happens if you have a a roommate that is ungodly and involved in all kinds of relationships that are sinful. Uh, you know, we have young people come, and they're just thrown in with other young people at the college, people they've never met, and uh, some of the horrendous situations they're in. So a book like this would would certainly be, I think, helpful uh, to to our young people. I would say to our young people, and I would say to older preachers and younger preachers as well, of course, all of these things, all of the reading we do should be subservient to our daily Bible reading. Jay talks about this, uh, Warren. He helps the congregation here. He's done a great job for us in that regard to keep that before us. If you read Deuteronomy 6, beginning in verse 4, I think is the passage. When you get up, when you go to bed, when you're standing, when you're sitting, when you're talking, when you're whatever you're doing, you're focused on the Word of God. Well, that's going to take some effort. That's going to take uh, these good habits. And what has helped me, and I, this is the final book that I'll hold up, is an old book by Thomas A. Kempis, The Imitation of Christ. There are lots of devotional books, but I just thoroughly enjoy reading through this book. Just short little vignettes, short chapters, all kinds of uh, ideas that will... Uh, stoke the imagination. We haven't talked about fiction, reading fiction. We don't have time to do that, I'm sure, but uh, to stoke the imagination, to think lofty thoughts about God. Uh, probably Warren will remember, maybe you too, Jay, this book in the early 60s by J.B. Phillips, Your God is Too Small. And so we try to minimize God. We put God uh, into our preconceived uh, uh, pockets of uh, uh, idealism of what we think God should be. Uh, let's expand, let's have an expansive mind and heart for God. Uh, and so a devotional book such as this, I think, it just helps us focus. Uh, when I'm reading this book and, and when we come to a passage in the Psalms, I open my Bible and I read the Psalm or I read the proverb or whatever it may be. Uh, but young people can do that as well. And there are many dedicated, bright young people who uh, are a credit to the Lord already, but I'll tell you, to form those habits early on, early on in life, of course, that's uh, that would be a great value. Randy, is there a daily Bible reading plan? I know there are a lot of different plans and calendar setups for daily Bible reading. Is there one that you prefer or recommend? Well, I just use the one Jay gives us here at the congregation. And uh, he could probably tell you more about that than I could. My wife, Marilyn, has uh, the plan downloaded on her iPad, and we do our daily Bible reading together every day at home. Try to do it early in the morning when we first get up before the day gets away. And then, of course, we have prayer and talk about things that we've read. And uh, you could just start off by reading uh, in Genesis, and then I think probably a lot of people have gotten hung up or they've slowed down by the time they get to Numbers or uh, Deuteronomy, Leviticus, or whatever, uh, but to alternate between the old and the new, and uh, that I think will keep the variety going, and of course at home, parents can really facilitate this if they'll stick with their children and have their children read, and we have young people in our home 
uh, maybe babysitting or something like that when my wife does that. And we study Bible lessons with these, with these young people and have them read passages to us to try to cultivate that. Uh, but that would be the plan. Jay, I'm not sure what it is called. Can you help us? Well, what we do um, is there's BibleGateway.com, and you're able to uh, plug in how many days you want to read, whether it's Old Testament, New Testament. It spits all of that out, and then we print that. So it's, it's nothing to it. A lot of resources there for daily Bible reading. Okay. Randy, I want to express my gratitude to you for being with us. You've really given us some good ideas, and uh, after we uh, post this recording, I'll have Jay in the comments section list these books you've mentioned. A uh, little extra work for Jay to do uh, after we complete this. And uh, Jay, I'm going to let you express appreciation to Randy, and then you can turn it back to me, and I'll close it out. Of course, Randy, we thank you so much for being with us. So uh, we appreciate everything you said and always good to talk to you about books. Well, thank you, Jay. And thank you, Warren, both. I'm glad to talk about these books and others as well. Certainly appreciate the good work that y'all are doing. All right. Thanks, Randy. This concludes All About Books for this time. Uh, next, within a few weeks, we have a new author with a new book we will interview. So watch Facebook for these announcements. Be safe and remember, this is a good time to read books you've been meaning to read and put the Bible at the very top of your list. Thank you for being with us.